In this video, we're going to be talking about how to interpolate between contours on a map. Now, what I'm going to be showing you is not an exact science. So th this particular method of doing contour interpolation is really an estimation. Something to keep in mind is that a contour interval, um, or sorry, not contour interval, but the accuracy that's related to the contour interval is only one third of that contour interval. So really the error that we're looking at is 30%. So if you're going to calculate between contours, you're gonna like be really fussy about what the numbers are, really the accuracy is still, like if you look at 100 feet, like what we do with 82J07 and 82J08, that 100 feet interval, we're really looking at like a 33 foot error. So, so what I'm going to do is not an exact science. It is one way of estimating contours, but it is a, um, it is a way to get sort of close to what you need to. So I'm going to go back to the profile that we did in the last video, which is this one here. And then, so what we're going to look at first is we're going to try to figure out where the road is based on elevation. So as we come down to our road and where we had it before, this was the location of the previous road, or the previous location that we used for the elevation. So I'm going to draw a dot there so that we know that that's where we're going to be doing an interval to. So the rules of doing contour interpolation is that you're going to use the 90 degree angles to the contours as best as you can. And you're going to use the closest contours that you can. And you're only going to divide between your contour, like along the contour interval between them, um, yeah, up to four times. After four times, it's just you're trying to get too accurate and it's not going to work. So I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to find the contours. So at 90 degrees, this is actually a pretty easy contour interval to work along because it's right along the same line as what we did the, the profile with. And I'm going to measure between each of the contours. So I can see that the contours themselves, I have this contour here and this contour here, and it works out to 4.4 centimeters. So going to the board, I have 4.4 centimeters. That's my top number. I am going to divide that in half. So that's gonna give me half my contour interval along that line. So half of that is going to be 2.2 centimeters. So I go back down to my map. I'll give you a chance to zoom in. <laughs> and I'm going to find 2.2 centimeters. And 2.2 centimeters is right where that little mark is. Now what side of this mark is the, the road? That is on this side of the contour interval. So I don't need to worry about this component here anymore. I only need to worry about this side. So then I go back up here and I'm going to divide again by half. So now if I divide it by half, I have 1.1 centimeters. So I go down here and I'm going to measure out between the two contours 1.1 centimeters. So hopefully the camera is good enough to see this. So you can see where I divided it and where the actual road is. So again, what side of that do I look on? I go on this side. But should I, does it matter if I split it again? Or do you think that is close enough to the line? Well, we could divide it again just for the heck of it. So this is going to be 0 0.55 centimeters. So it would be the next division. Now, my ruler is not that accurate. It doesn't go to that kind of precision. So I'm going to go here, and it's going to be approximately there. So on my map, which one is it closer to? It is closer to this side here. So I know that I stop Cross that off. I know that I stop at this, this um, division. So at 4.4 centimeters, that's a 100 foot contour interval. At 2.2 centimeters, 
that is a 50 foot contour interval. And at 1.1 centimeters, this is a 25 foot contour interval. Now, if I'm going to do this, I have to figure out what are my contours down on my map. So, I'm gonna go back down to the map. <laughs> in and out, in and out. So I need to find out what is the contour interval or contour value, elevation value along this contour. And it's actually marked for me, which is kind of nice, which is 3,900 feet. So I know that my above, so I have my point here, this contour is 3,900. And then if I go down to this one, it's going to be a little bit lower. So I have 4,039, so this should be 38. And that makes sense because I can look over here and I see 37. And then this next line, which follows again, sometimes you have to look around, but this is the line here, that's 38. So this one below here is 38. So that's what we're seeing. And if I go back down here, I can see that it is close to the first separation. So I, that was the fourth one, or the, the second separation here. So from here to here, that is this. We go half, this is the half one, this is this one. So we're going to fig figure out where this one's sitting with respect to those. So we had the halfway point that was here. And then looking back at the map, we had the next one, uh, change, which is there. So here we are. So this is 25 feet. Then this one was the 50 feet. So to figure out where that elevation is, I'm going to add 25 feet to this elevation value. So now we have three, eight, oops, two, five feet. This is where my, approximately where my point is sitting. So going back to here, back to my, my profile, I'm gonna find where 3825 is. So that would be, using my ruler to, to go between that. So halfway is there. So this would be about there. So that goes that and that's where we start. So the next step would be doing the same thing again for the silo. And so if we go back to the silo that's up here, we see that it's located at this location here. We're going to find my two contours as much as we can get 90 degrees between. So I think as I use this, this one's a little bit more complicated because i got to draw a straight line. And it's going to be a much larger difference between the two. So I would say that's probably the best line there. So there's, I'm going to draw the line through. So here's my full contour interval from this point to this point. I'm going to put my ruler along that line and I measure it to be about 6.8 centimeters. So I'm going to write that up here. And that is equal to 100 feet. Then I'm going to divide that by 2, right? So we always divide the contour interval by 2. So 6.8 equals 3.4. So this is going to be my 50 foot interval. So I go back down to my map. And I find 3.4, which is right there. I decide what side of that is it on, and I decide it's on this lower side. So I'm only going to divide this side. Now if I divide this again, go, I know I'm bouncing back and forth here, I'm going to make everyone dizzy. <laughs> so divide this again. So 3, 
um, 0.4 is 1.7 centimeters, and this is going to be the 25 foot elevation. So I go back down to the map, and I find 1.7, which is right there. And I can decide whether I think I need to divide that more. So the silo part is looking very close to the center. So I might actually divide this one more time, because I haven't divided it into thirds yet. I mean, 25 feet is still more accurate than the 30, but we'll, we'll give this a shot and just try it one more time as a deeper, a deeper cut into it. So 1.7 centimeters divided by 2 is 0 0.85 centimeters. So this is going to be 12.5 feet. Getting really accurate there, but we don't, don't need to do, get too crazy about it. All right, so then go back down. We get eight and a half feet. So it's right here. So I would say that now, after breaking that up into the third time, the silo is closest to that line there. So now I'm going to draw this out again on the board and instead of going back down here. So I have my contours and you can just stay up here for the moment. The contour values, checking them. So that should be 3700. This one's 37. So that should be 36. Four, nine, eight. Actually, I've got a surprise for you. 37. So what do we do now? Oh no, because it's all on the same. But we know that the contours, it's not just going to be like completely flat anyways, it's kind of going to be up and down. So mathematically, this is going to end up becoming 3,700, right? Because even if it, we did draw the line between them and said, here's my point, here is the line, and this is where my silo is, it's still going to be 37. So mathematically, it still works out. But what would I do otherwise? So I, would just, I wanted to do this example because we did separate it up and it is above that. And um, so this, the action, if this was going up, it would have been 37, 12.5 feet. And that's what the, the value would have been. But it's at 3,700 because it's all flat. It's all the same contour line and that goes along there. So we go back to my contour. I find my 3,700 and I draw it on here. And I can decide whether it goes up or down, but because they're both 3,700, it would show that it's going to actually go down a little bit and then back up. So it'll go down and back up. And the reason I would say it goes down is because of all the waterways in there. So water always goes to the lowest point, so we can see that there's lots of water in here, so it's going to go down. It actually may actually go down and then up and then down and then up and then down and then up again but we'll just take a quick estimation so just to wrap up between the two videos this is now my profile between the silo and the road and that is like as if i've cut everything from the side and i'm looking at it the distances have all been marked out they're all to scale because the scale itself is 1 to 50,000 so my distance on the bottom is a 1 to 50,000. That's the scale. So I could actually measure this out and then calculate a slope. So slope is going to be our next video and, um, and I will see you guys in that next one.